You're listening to the official Push Square podcast featuring Ben and Ben. Do you push square? Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of the Push Square podcast. My name is Ben Potter. I am the podcast editor for the best PlayStation website on the internet, pushsquare.com. And I'm joined, as always, even though it's only been 15 times, by Ben Tarrant. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? I'm not bad. Not bad. I'm quality microphone-less for this this one, but um, I'm podcasting from my new house in London, which is cool. Exciting, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, so a dip in microphone quality temporarily. That's fine, and it's going to be much better next time, isn't it? Yes, yes, I've actually purchased one now, so this is solved. Look at that, no no rinky-dink operation here. Yeah. We run a tight ship. Professional. But you have had an absolute mare when it comes to games, which I think we're going to talk about a bit later on. Oh, Christ, yeah. But for those who are interested... This is all about PlayStation VR, this episode. And when I say all about PlayStation VR, we're going to lead with some general news, have a quick discussion about a feature which this week, or this episode, I should say, is how amazing October is for PS4 games. Because, like me, you're probably thinking when you hear that headline, what a load of... And then when you actually go through it, there are quite a number of, uh, of large games out this month. Then, Sammy Barker. King Barker, editor-in-chief of PushSquare.com, is on to have a monstrous chat about PlayStation VR. There are staggered embargoes for the various games in terms of reviews. So Sammy gives his thoughts on the PSVR unit itself, its setup, uh, the future of the of the titles that are coming out, and we talk in depth about PSVR Worlds, Tumble VR, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and Battlezone VR. That's a 25-minute conversation that'll be coming a bit later on. But very exciting. Just after we do that, we'll very quickly run through what we're playing, where Tarrant will discuss his ordeal, and then we'll go on some audience questions before wrapping it up. Wrap that up. Are we ready? Let's do this. News time. Dangon Romper, Ben. Dragon Roper. Dragon Roper, as you've written here. Trigger Happy Havoc and Dangon Romper 2 are heading to PS4 in early 2017. Um, There are no exact dates yet uh, in the West for that, but... That's pretty exciting. People love those games. Dangon Roper. Right, okay. Roper. I can tell any meaningful conversation about it with you is going to be fruitless. So we'll just, we'll leave that there. What, what happened next? <laughs> um, Push Square wrote an article um, about a week ago stipulating that the Modern Warfare remaster for Infinite Warfare will require the disc for the okay. physical copies. And Activision have come out and confirmed that that is the case. So if you do want to play Modern Warfare, you will need to have your Infinite Warfare disc. Now, does this potentially throw any spanners into the assumption that they'll release this digitally at some point? Or is it just to scare people off for now and make people think, oh, well, I'd better buy it? I, I think they're going to stick with it. They're going to they're gonna miss so many people if you can get it, if you can eventually get it separate. I think myth is putting it lightly. Yes. So think how much the the deluxe edition costs, how much people only want Modern Warfare and are paying that money for just Modern Warfare. If they release that individually, they're going to lose a huge amount of market. So I think this just goes to solidify that. Well, Activision have made their bed, I suppose. Time to lie in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Outlast 2, that game that none of us are going to play because we're cowards. The demo is now up on the PlayStation Store if you'd like to give it a try. I think there is a feature now on PushSquare.com, a preview based on that demo. So if you want some more in-depth thoughts, you can go there and check that out because I sure as hell won't be playing it. No, me neither. I mean, Outlast 1 was good for what I played, which was about 10 minutes. Yep, and that's it. (laughs) I'm done. Yep. (laughs) That's enough. Nope. That's enough of that. Uh, Sony are also exploring the possibility of PlayStation VR titles coming to PlayStation Plus. I think this would be a very sensible idea, but you would have to irritate a great deal of people in order to make this happen. Because I don't think they can add it in addition 
No, to the, How we've discussed P- the, the way they should do PS Plus in the past is that they should drop PS3 or Vita titles and just focus on bulking up the PS4 titles. Yeah. But imagine the absolute <laughs> storm if they dropped Vita titles and instead put VR titles in their place. Uh, that's because not even a fair trade. I, I think there's a big difference between getting rid of a platform and increasing the quality of a platform that more people have and getting rid of a platform and trading in for another platform. I think that yeah. that could really irritate people. So they'd have to go about this very cleverly. Tactfully. Yeah, exactly. So as not to annoy people. Um, speaking of VR, Resident Evil's also terrifying VR exclusivity is for PSVR for a whole year. So that section, which actually made people throw up at shows, not because of its motion sickness, but actually because it's so scary. Right. Um, that's exclusive for PSVR owners for the first year, which is really cool. And I think it's one of the first um, big like multi-platform exclusives, like yeah. exclusivity deals. It's a big uh, deal. I know. Pla- uh, I know. Battlezone is just for PSVR currently, mm-hmm. um, but that, I think this is the first multi-platform exclusivity deal. So that's really cool. Yeah, I'm not sure. Obviously, this this wouldn't really work in Hololens because it's it's VR, but it's not with a headset. Mm. So it's slightly different. So you would only really, I suppose, see this stuff on PC. But does Resident Evil have that much of a home on PC? No, I suppose people okay. would buy it if it had VR, if they have Oculus or what have you. Uh, that would be a major selling point. But it, it seems to me, it strikes me that the Resident Evil series is very much at home on console. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to what we were saying, that PlayStation is dominated in the VR tent for console wars, if you want to call it a console war, because Xbox don't really have anything. Yeah. So it makes sense. Next up, The Last Guardian. It's nearly out, even though it's been delayed again. <laughs> a billboard has been spotted promoting the game. So you've got to believe that they can't do this anymore. Yeah, they can't push you back. They're sinking money into marketing. It's It's got an end, end site. It's got yeah. to be. It has to be. Absolutely. Which is good. It has to be. Yeah. Skyrim soundtrack. They're doing this a lot at the moment, Terry. Yeah, loads of like loads of concerts for game live, soundtracks. Yeah, live classical performances of various soundtracks. I saw there's a Pokemon one coming up as well, but Skyrim soundtrack will be performed at the London Palladium on the 16th of November. Yep. But, although, you've you've written although yeah. original artists has not has not condoned this event. So basically, the original score artist has actually come out and said that he had not only did he have no idea that this was happening Mm -hmm. but they're using that he's not condoning it the music itself isn't his but you can't take i I can't remember exactly but you can't take it directly so they have jeremy soul uh somebody else i believe different name uh you can't take music directly so they've had to to take the musical score by ear so there's right. like they're like versions being played live. So it's a cover, in in essence. So it's an yeah. officially licensed cover, but not licensed by the creator. Yes, who is being exactly. uncooperative for that reason. Yeah, the creator's not not present and isn't going to be performing it, which is really right. strange. That is odd. And it, it was all positive, and everybody was psyched for it. And he came out being like, "What the hell is this crap?" Yeah, hang on. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's a bit bizarre. Yeah, really bizarre. Assassin's Creed, next potential location. They're kind of running out of these, so it kind of, well, I suppose it makes sense that they're going to (laughs) Egypt next. Is this ancient Egypt? Well, there's pyramids and rubbish, so... Well, I mean, there are still pyramids and rubbish. Oh, yeah. You you just thought that they're they're not going to do current uh, Egypt. I mean, Cairo is a mess. ISIS could wander in. Oh, God. (laughs) That would add a real dynamic. Oh, Abstergo. Is actually ISIS. Yeah. Oh Christ! Yeah, I can't believe be. we just said that. Could be. I'm. I'm not even going to cut that out. No. Great. And finally, what's the last point? Um. So you know that game that isn't Overwatch. The one oh, that's Battleborn. you mean Battleborn? Battleborn. Yeah. Um. There was a lot of hullabaloo about it potentially going free to play. Okay. Um. And the creators come out and been like, well, 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 no, but we were planning a trial version that would be free to play so like a few heroes a small like almost like a demo version right um i looking at evolve and the way that the player base dropped drastically and then they put it to free to play and then it had like a 600 percent spike um in player base Mm -hmm. i I think 
I mean, bless it, Battleborn is it's fighting a losing battle whichever way it looks because you know it's, it's contending lost isn't yeah it? it's contending with overwatch so i think the free-to-play model would be really good for it so. yeah i suppose so i still don't think many people will want to play it you say there's been a spike in evolve but how many people are still playing it now is the well, question yeah 600 percent more of one yes is 600 <laughs> people <laughs> so hooray yeah but there we go that's all the news we've got for you now you can you tell that we're trying to fly through it as fast as possible let's move <laughs> on to the featured feature the featured feature this week tarrant is october a strong month for ps4 it really is yeah see i didn't think this Someone October's asked me the other crazy. day on another podcast I do, which obviously doesn't exist, um, right. and, and they said, can you, how many PS4 games can you name coming out before the end of the year? And I was like, uh, Mafia 3, <laughs> and that was about it. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. But do you want to get the first one? We can prove you wrong right now. Well, the first one's Mafia 3. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> That's out this week. 7th of October. Is that Friday? I feel like that's Friday. Yes, yes, yeah. Friday. I've got that pre-ordered. It's been posted. I'm very Death excited. Pre-orders. Very excited. Death, death to you, mate. <laughs> Thanks. Get Have in you a seen hole. Man? Get in a hole. Uh, next up is Rise of the Tomb Raider, which a year on from its release on Xbox One is finally out on PS4 and comes with a load of extra stuff. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah. See, That's people crazy. People are losing their minds or in, and, and are impatient about the Call of Duty Modern Warfare re-release but wait a year and it'll be over before you know it and it'll be out on the store but you'll need the disc <laughs> <laughs> playstation vr that releases on the 13th of october yeah. and you've got that pre-ordered as well haven't you i have i'm getting one of those you're um, nutter yeah crazy guy right i spend my money wisely uh you want to save up for that holiday no you want to save up for a new car no you want to save up for like a place that's yours instead of rented Nah, I kind of want a PlayStation VR. <laughs> I bet you're going to get the Pro eventually as well. No, I don't think so. I have no need for that. Don't all. go that gimmicky. I don't, well, I don't need it. I just don't need it. it I'd just, be lying if I said I didn't want VR. Oh. VR, right. I do want it. Well, then when you come and play, you can use mine. Give it a whirl. Yeah, absolutely. Next on the list, Dragon Quest Builders. No. Nah. Have you heard anything about this? No. Nah. I've heard of Dragon Quest. Right, it's it's a combination of sort of like well, this particular entry is like Minecraft, but with RPG elements to it. Yeah, and it's the cool. reviews apparently are really good for it. Good, so that's great. I think it's on Vita, so that's yeah. another no, no. another reason not Better to, to its cap. hate that device. I don't see why it gets so much hate. Well, people like to hate things. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Next, Battlefield One, your favorite game this year. Yeah, so they showed a trailer for this, the single player. It looked and good. Yeah, it looks like they got the emotion levels right, uh, which is good. They used appropriate music, um, <laughs> had different voice acting. You know what? Well, they, they have said that it's going to be split across different campaigns and you'll be playing as different people. Yes. But it is kind of telling and kind of annoying that um, the protagonist or the guy that's doing all the narrating is American. Oh, and it's always going to be again. Like that, I don't. I, I feel like I don't need to state this, but I will anyway. Um, I am not at all underappreciating or undervaluing the efforts of the United States of America during World War One. Yeah, but I think it would show a perhaps almost a lack of faith for them to do anything other than have a U.S. protagonist. It's a bit of a cliche almost. Um, which is kind of a shame. It's clear that there are other nationalities in there mm. uh, because you can see them in the trailers. But it's still kind of annoying that they feel like they have to use the American voiceover to make people think, oh, it's okay. You know, I, I don't really care about the French. I don't really care about the Germans, but yeah, at least I'll get to play as an American or something. That's a very cynical view. <laughs> you are but cynical about this are, game. The chances are the marketing department has told them that that's what they need to do and that's not going to reflect the final game. And that's fine. But it's yeah. out on the 21st of October. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Ramsey game. Scroll past that. Uh, <laughs> Robert Ramsey. Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. 
It's actually uh, pronounced Dragon Balls in a verse. <laughs> it's a one word. Yeah. Balls in a verse. Balls in a universe. I actually went to Robert Ramsey's house the other day. And is there a shrine to Dragon Ball Z? There kind of is. Oh my god. <laughs> he showed he showed me a Dragon Ball game. I don't think it was Xenoverse. Oh, uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, sorry. But it was the most bewildering thing I've ever seen. Oh, Just some like weeaboo crap. Explosions and uh, very angry Japanese. <laughs> I had no idea. No idea what was going on. I love how I said that purely in jest and you were like, no, yeah, he, no, he, no, he has no, one. Yeah, yeah, a little, little shrine. He's got candles and everything. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, next up, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. Do people still really want to buy this after the whole mods thing? Uh, I, I still do. Yeah. Just because I... I really, really liked Skyrim, and my PS3 is more or less defunct. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to buy it at launch. I mean, it's fifty quid on the PS Store, which is a just joke. I think it's cheaper physic- physical. Obviously, it's, it's cheaper than than the digital price. But I mean, as in, I think it's a it's more of a budget release. About thirty thirty quid, thirty five quid. That's still way too much. I'll pay for it when it's like fifteen. So you're going to be waiting a while. <laughs> uh, but I have no interest in that at all. I'm so I'm so done with Skyrim. <laughs> I'm not busting to play it, but like I said, I'll pick it up as a, a passing bargain bin game, and I just, I will probably have to wait a while. But hell, play I haven't played it for ages. Yeah, I need to start that again because I've left it too long. Yeah, kind of do. Well, I'll explain also why I need to play it again <laughs> in a bit. Right. One of the <laughs> final games out this month, Tarrant. Titanfall 2, which I'm really, really psyched for and keep forgetting I can actually play because I keep things... I see Titanfall and I'm like, it explodes. But no, I can <laughs> I can actually play it now, which is great. And that's on the 28th as well. The 28th is a really busy day. Yeah, see, I hate multiplayer games and all I've played of this is the multiplayer so far and it left me very cold. And from what I understand, even people who like Titanfall didn't like that multiplayer. Oh, really? I didn't so, get a chance, so... So I don't know. I really... I, I have no interest in this game. The single player looks really cool. Okay. And I like the idea of Max. Take your word for it. Finally, the last big game out this month is World of Final Fantasy. This looks so cute. It still confuses me slightly about what this game is. It looks like it's got characters from all of them jumping in, but I really don't know about this game. This is very much one that I'd have to wait for reviews. (laughs) It reminds me a lot of Blue Dragon. Do you remember that game? On Xbox? Yeah. Right. I never played it. I never had an Xbox. Okay. It was like, it was the one game I got with my 360 um, before it caught fire. (laughs) Uh, True story. But um, it kind of reminds me of that. It's like a cutesy animated turn-based game, turn-based RPG. So yeah, I'm I'm actually quite interested in this. I have no interest really in the Final Fantasy world, but World of Final Fantasy has piqued my interest. I mean, it looks like it's purely fan service. So unless you're willing to let yourself be utterly bewildered by everything that's going on, it's probably best that you avoid it, even if you like the look of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's just the Final Fantasy itself. franchise in general. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. But you're right. World of Final Fantasy Titanfall 2, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition, uh, Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse 2 are all out on the 28th of October. Someone didn't read the marketing memo. So that's an expensive day for some people. A very expensive day. Uh, Now, we did actually open it up to the reader base of PushSquare.com to Mm -hmm. find out what they thought and uh, what they're most excited for. It looks like PlayStation VR is the runaway winner. Yes. With 21% of the vote. With World of Final Fantasy in close second. Yeah. Yeah bloody weeb site that's the problem <laughs> absolute weeb site rise of the tomb raider and mafia 3 are drawing with 14 percent, and then 10 percent for skyrim nine percent for dragon dragon's quest builders and the rest are on sort of two or three percent yeah. uh so there we go but yeah stronger than i expected yeah yeah much stronger than i expected having said that playstation vr is the winner I think it's time we talk in depth about PlayStation VR, don't you? Yeah, let's do that. And now joining me on the phone is King Barker. Hello, Sammy. How are you? Bow down before me. (laughs) Editor-in-chief of PushSquare.com. How are you today? 
Nah, hi Ben, I'm really good, thanks. I've been busy playing lots of PlayStation VR. Oh, funny, that's the reason <laughs> we got you on. So, all right, you've got an early, uh, you've got an early version of it, or you've got. Yeah, I was, I was very lucky. Sony's given me some bungs. <laughs> given me <you> some bungs. <laughs> yeah. So what's uh, what's it like then in terms of just uh, just the packaging and the box and stuff like that? So it comes in quite a big box, bigger than I was expecting. Um, it's very nicely packaged, though. It is nice. Um, there's an unboxing on our YouTube channel if you want to see it in all its beautiful detail. But yeah, um, basically, this thing comes with a lot of parts, more parts than even I was expecting, to be brutally nice. honest with you. Um, I think you get six or seven cables. You wow. get, obviously, the headset itself. And then you get this processing unit, which is kind of like a mini PS4 in itself, yeah. which, which everything runs through. So what the processing unit does is it handles 3D audio and it also splits the image right. um, so that you can output what you see on the TV or not. In some games, it uses it as like an asymmetrical multiplayer kind of feature. So people see different things to what the headset wearer is wearing. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's nice. Um, the instruction manual has to be very detailed because um it's quite complicated but they've done a good job they even number the cables so that you know where to right. plug everything and they've done some nifty like visual um information like you plug certain cables into triangle and circle and square and x and stuff like that just to help you along so while it's not um a simple setup they've made it as easy as they possibly can mm. uh, but yeah i i think I don't know. Do you want me to go straight into the issues, or do we want to talk about the pros first? Uh, let's let's have some issues. Um, so, this thing has, as I've just mentioned, a lot of cables. Yep. There are a lot of cables, and I don't know about you, but I hate cables. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had to kind of rearrange my entire entertainment center to get everything in place. Right. Um, you have cables coming into the front of the PS4, you have cables coming into the back of the PS4, you have cables coming into the processing unit, you have cables coming out of the processing unit, going into your TV, they're everywhere. Jeez, wow. It's okay. like Spaghetti Junction behind my TV at the moment. <laughs> I, I, I had to cable tie some of them. So there is a lot of cables, um, and that's a problem if you don't like cables. The other issue is the processing unit is loud. It's very loud. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah, it's got its own fan in it. It's got its own kind of um, power brick as well. Okay, so it, um, that, that whole thing needs to be powered too. Yeah. Right. So, so the processing unit... So I've had a PS4 Slim, um, which is practically inaudible. You can't hear it. Um, and if you've upgraded to get a silent setup again, because so, a lot of people had a problem with the launch PS4, so they thought they were quite noisy. Mm -hmm. um, mine wasn't too bad, but anyway... Um, now you're adding this processing unit in and you get a load of fan noise again, uh, which isn't great. And if you want to play non-VR games, you have to have this processing unit turned on. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to switch all the cables around and unplug everything and, and stuff like that. So you're basically getting a brand new fan noise, which isn't nice. <laughs> yeah. OK, that's that's a bit of a shame. But yeah. this, this unit presumably allows, well, obviously it, it makes it work, but... In terms of actually people sitting next to you, do all of the games display on the TV by default so people can see what you're seeing? Yeah, yeah, they do. It depends on the game as to what you see. Like I was saying, um, in Tumble VR, and we'll mm. get into the games in a minute, but in Tumble VR, which is a good example, it has a multiplayer mode where someone controls basically a drone and they're trying to knock down the tower that you're building in the virtual reality headset, if right. that makes sense. So okay. they see it from a different angle. So some games do that. Other games just show you exactly what the headset wearer can see it depends on the game but yeah they all take advantage of this second screen functionality which is good because it can be quite an anti-social thing strapping on a headset and mm -hmm. going into a virtual world but this kind of makes it more social at the very least other people can say oh look you look over there and and you know stuff like that which makes it a nicer experience when you're around other people of course of course what about the um the capturing of video because i know I know you were having some issues with that using your capture card. Yeah, I, I've figured it out for some games. I haven't figured it out for other games. Now, I'm not a veteran at video stuff by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm right. going to guess 
that this is my error and not not their <laughs> error. But yeah, it, it complicates things. Let's just say that. Okay. Have you tried using the share button yet? You can use the share button. I haven't actually saved anything, but it seems like all the share functionality works. And okay. actually, a lot of the changes that they've made with the most recent PS4 firmware update, they make a lot more sense when you've got VR because, for example, you know the new quick menu, which only fills oh, half right. the screen? So it just overlays that, rather than... That yeah. overlays in VR. So, yeah, so a lot of those tweaks kind of make sense. But an interesting thing that I can mention here on this actually is there are no notifications at the moment. So if you get a trophy, you get the sound, but it doesn't oh. pop up any icon. Um, okay. Same with messages and stuff like that, which I guess makes sense because it would really break the immersion having a, a big pop up on your screen when you're trying to look around you. It would. And presumably that would be static as well. So wherever you looked around in this in-game world, that would just be a, a constant feature on yeah. your in a, in a yeah. particular spot it seems like that's something they couldn't figure out so they're just like let's just put the sound in <laughs> yeah the sound in. that'll be fine okay so the yeah because the sharing is what i'm really interested in because i'm definitely going to be doing some live streaming with, right. with my headset and i'm just wondering it is it the same as basically it depends on the game what's displayed on the screen as you said so i, I would games say will, would do I that. would say good luck with, with live streaming this oh, thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that should be a fun challenge. Anyway, sorry. What were the what were the pros? What have you enjoyed so far? So the pros are the virtual reality itself is amazing. It is actually amazing, and I think people that haven't tried it yet, and there are so many people that are skeptical about this stuff, mm -hmm. they don't get it. <laughs> and and that sounds like a really condescending thing to say, but you just don't get how amazing it is yeah. and it is amazing from the sense of scale that you get in some games like to, to pick up a particular game the london heist um in this game it, it, in playstation vr worlds which contains the london heist uh -huh. you get like um there's this demo where you're kind of in this guy's lockup he's kind of like vinnie jones and he's going to beat you up and stuff mm -hmm. but the depth that the image creates in vr makes him look massive like he looks like a proper full-scale meathead right which is incredible you don't get that on a tv you can have the biggest tv in the world and you still wouldn't feel that sense of this guy is a big burly muscly guy and he's bearing down on me and oh my god i need to get out of the way <laughs> um, and that's what virtual reality does so many games have this amazing sense of scale tumble vr is another one you're basically building a tower you, you're placing blocks on top of each other it's lego mm. um but you look down at the tower that you've built and you're like, wow, look how massive this tower I've built is. It's huge. It's enormous. And it feels massive and it looks massive. And it's, it's just incredible technology. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. It's not perfect. The resolution in the headset is lower than what you expect. So if you sit a normal distance away from a high definition television or even a 4K television now, um, you're used to pinpoint image quality and you don't get pinpoint image quality because you've got a 1080p screen strapped to your face basically right um, i was going to so ask you about the blurriness because that's something that i always picked up on every because you you immediately forget about it when once you realize oh god i'm actually yeah. in here and i'm looking around and this is amazing but when you first put on the headset every single time i've tried it i've thought oh this is really blurry well there are a few things firstly you have to make sure you focus it properly um, and it does have a lot of great options. I, I should say the headset's very comfortable as well. You can play it for ages and it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's got like a slide on the front which allows you to focus it. And if you're not focusing it properly, it will be a lot more blurry. But it also depends on the game. Some games I've found are slightly blurrier than others. But yes, it is by default a slight less quality than what you get on a normal HD display because you've got it strapped to your face at the end of the day. You, you If you press your face up to your TV screen, it, that'll look blurry of too. Of course, of course. So, I mean, this is something that will get better over time. It's not there yet. But like you said yourself, it's good enough that you instantly well not instantly but you pretty quickly forget about it mm -hmm. um once you're engrossed and immersed into what you're seeing on the screen so yeah i i don't think that's a major issue at the moment to be honest with you okay well before we move on to discussing the actual games that we're allowed to discuss the embargo went up today um i do have a couple of questions for you go on i've just scribbled down have you tried the theater mode out yet yes you can play uh, other games but just have it be massive and right in your face <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the problem with this is it's a good leapfrog from what we've just talked about is the resolution's not great. So you can play The Last of Us or Uncharted 4 or whatever on a massive cinema screen, but the resolution's really low. So why would you want to do that? Right. I suppose it's, so. it's, it's the reality. Does it work with this. Netflix? Uh, I haven't tried Netflix, actually, but I th- I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, I, I think it works yeah. It works with everything in the PS4 UI, as far as I'm aware. So. Okay, so that might perhaps but, be a better application than games. Yeah, but the one thing that I will say is, like, some of these things simulate, like, um, they kind of render a theatre or whatever around you. Here, you're just mm-hmm. in a black space with a big screen in front of you, so they haven't gone overboard with this feature. Right, okay, okay. Uh, what about... Um, because I know that the games that we're going to be discussing today are relatively, should we say, sedentary experiences where you don't move. Right. You're just sort of sat there and you're interacting with stuff. Have you, I know you won't, you won't be able to talk about them in detail, but have you actually played any games where you can physically move around the environment with a controller and look around with your head? The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no. Okay, that's no, fine. But it can do that. It can do that. Um, I know that the Rise of the Tomb Raider um the little demo that they're putting with that, um, that allows you to walk around like the um, HTC Vive. So it, it is capable of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it will be amazing, I can't say at the moment, but it, it can do that. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious because I've I've not personally experienced it yet. I know some people have played Resi 7, for example, which obviously has you moving around physically with a controller, uh, but then turning your head to look around and that kind of stuff. But right. it seems that the only people that... I'm in contact with at least have have only played games where you're sat there doing you right. know, with no movement whatsoever. I've played Resident Evil. Really. I've played Resident Evil Seven in VR. Oh, have you? Um, okay, how was yeah. that? Well, it's not you. You don't physically move. You use the controller to move. Yes. So is Sorry, that, is that me, what you? Yeah, let, let me clarify. <laughs> that that is what I mean. I don't mean actually physically walking. Right, around. I I've mean as you. in a game where you're not your character isn't just stationary sat there. Okay, so in in Resident Evil Seven, the way they they do it, or in the demo that I played, they let you kind of teleport short distances, and when you turn, you turn on increments. So all of this is designed to get you through the environment without basically being sick, basically, um, and that worked really fine for me. Resident Evil Seven probably isn't the best example of VR games because. Um, it feels like it's been built with the PS4 in mind and then VR has been tacked on, but I, I didn't feel ill or anything like that. It felt, it felt okay. Okay. Uh, and finally, obviously the two big controller inputs are going to be the Move controller and your standard DualShock. Have you tried yeah. both of those? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Um, so we, shall we get into PlayStation VR Worlds then? Yeah, go on, uh, let's do it. What, what's included yeah. in that? Because I'm still not entirely sure apart from the London heist. All right, PlayStation VR Worlds is the weirdest minigame collection you'll ever see. You know how with the Kinect and with the Wii, you had obviously Wii Sports and Kinect Sports, and they kind of they had a consistent theme to them, didn't they? Mm. Which was the sports. Um, PlayStation VR Worlds feels like it wants to be one of those minigame collections, but it doesn't. <laughs> there's nothing cohesive about it at all. You get the London Heist, which is the gangster one I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. You get um, Ocean Descent, which is the one they've been showing for a while, where you go in like a bathosphere type thing and the shark attacks you. Mm-hmm. Um, you get Danger Ball, which is Pong. Okay. <laughs> you get um, VR Luge, which is like a racing type thing. Where you're like basically on a skateboard and you're going down a road. Mm-hmm. And you get, what is the last one? Oh, Scavenger's Odyssey, which is the only VR game thus far to make me feel ill. Oh, So okay. those are the five games. But I think with PlayStation VR Worlds, they're basically five tech demos that London Studio, who's made the game, spent too much money on and they had to sell them. That, that, that's basically my opinion on it. It always struck me that I was, well, I was always amazed that it wasn't bundled with the, with the unit. Yeah, I mean, they've... They've done a lot to it to try and turn it into a quote-unquote game. So there are challenges in each of the mini games that you can complete, and they've tied all these to the trophies, and they've tried to give you a reason to come back to it. But the reality is the London Heist is incredible. I think that's absolutely amazing. How long and that, you, does that go on for? About half an hour. That, that, oh, okay. And that's ultimately the problem with it. Um, the London Heist, though, it demonstrates all the advantages of VR in that 
half an hour sequence it shows how the moves work it show it even use <laughs> there's this bit where you have a cigar and you light the cigar with your two move controllers which operate each of your hands yeah. and then you kind of suck in and you'll breathe in the smoke and then you can blow it out in people's faces i mean it's just unbelievable <laughs> it's it's nonsense really but it's it's amazing that they programmed all that into it right but the problem with playstation vr worlds as a game if you're thinking of buying it is the London heist is great. Ocean Descent is amazing the first two times you do it. And then the other games are rubbish. So it's it's, it's like, well, they're charging 30 quid for it. What's this one that, that made you sick then? What's that? Scavenger's Odyssey is kind of like you're in a, a, a mech, but it's kind of like a spider mech. It's got like legs. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like it deep sea space and you shoot aliens by looking at them and then it's got a platforming element to it where you're kind of running up walls and jumping upside down and it, it just didn't work for me it's the only <laughs> vr game i've played that's i've wanted to take it off nice. um, which isn't great no that's and it's just it's, it's just a bad tech demo really because there's like two different enemies that you fight throughout the whole thing and it's just boring okay so that's sort of a, a disc of tech demos apart from really the London heist or London heist that's quite extensive. Yeah. Um, now that has got a, even though it is 30 pounds or what have you, it is, it is more of a budget title and you see games like Batman VR and things like that, that are 15 99. Yeah. My main concern is that while these are perhaps reasonable prices, given that they are budget titles or, or even tech demos, if you want to be that cynical, is there anything on the horizon besides rigs that doesn't really appeal to me as, as someone who doesn't really like online competitive games? Is it, are there any games really that, that are that are going to blow us away from a narrative perspective on the horizon as, as a full priced meaty from, game? From a narrative pers perspective, probably not. But I think stuff like Res Infinite, Super Hypercube, mm -hmm. all of these games, you'll come back. Battle Zone, um, I think you'll come back to to these games. So. Uh, it's early days i mean it, it's first generation tech that we've got here and it's going to take time for the really great stuff to come out i think but mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm not really worried about about the fact that like you point to the batman arkham vr mm -hmm. um i would pay 15 pounds to be batman for an hour oh, i'm yeah. sure I most people would so g give me stuff like that just let me experience something new something exciting for an hour and i'm happy with that see i would almost insist that that kind of thing should be on playstation now because i'm not sure that i want to even though it is a reasonable price i'm not sure if i want to pay 15.99 for something that ultimately i'm probably only going to play through once i, I just well, want to sort of rent it and and play it and, ex and experience it as you said but then after you've experienced something for the first time it's not as magical anymore yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I guess this is going to be the challenge. The first wave, they've got a lot of stuff ready for launch, um, and they've got they're saying fifty games, I think, by the end of the year. Okay. Um, then beyond that, we're going to have to see how long the second wave takes <laughs> to come out. But no, I do have other games that I can talk about here anyway. Okay. Um, Tumble VR. Now, did you ever play Tumble on PS3? I'm guessing you didn't, because about three people did. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> So this was a PlayStation Move launch title originally, mm -hmm. um, and it sees you kind of using the 3D motion tracking to stack blocks. It sounds really, really dull, but it's really, really fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and VR really enhances that because, because you've got the 3D image, you can judge the depth of where the bricks are being stacked on top of each other so you can build some really quite cool towers um but it does more than that there are other kind of levels to it i guess you'd call them where you have to find the structural weakness in an already built tower um, and blow it up which is very fun mm -hmm. um, and there are other ones where you have to bounce lasers around so it's a puzzle game basically right. but um that i think they're selling that for 11.99 Mm -hmm. um, or somewhere around that region, which which sounds good. And this has got the asymmetrical multiplayer mode as well, where you're building a tower in VR and, and the, the person watching on the television is trying to knock it down, which is qu it's quite fun. You know, it, it's not amazing. It's not going to blow anyone's mind off, but it's, it's good fun. Mm. I enjoyed that game. And the other one that I played is another budget game, I guess, um, Until Dawn Rush of Blood, yes, which is um... loosely based upon the supermassive games um 
adventure <laughs> game from from a few years back, which was amazing. Yeah, th- this one um, this one interests me the most, and it's a real shame that I'm a massive coward because it's the kind of game that I would buy and then make other people play uh, <laughs> because I would never do it. But but how is it? So it's a rail shooter, which is immediately disappointed me i was like i thought they were going to make a proper until dawn sequel and this was going to be a big sony franchise after the success of the original one i was so i was really disappointed when i heard they were making this mm-hmm. but i actually really liked it it's very good um you use two move controllers you can use the dualshock 4 for all of these games by the way but um in the case of until dawn rush of blood you really want the two move controllers because you control two guns in each hand so right. independently um if you're using the dual shot four you kind of have to aim them together which isn't as fun oh, yeah. um so it's a ghost train it's it, the setting is like you're on a roller coaster i guess and you're going through all these warped environments some of which are taken from the original game some of which are brand new um and it's really fun because it uses VR in some interesting ways. So I don't want to spoil it, but I guess I can allude to it. The final boss takes place. It's just the re- most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. And and because of VR, it feels massive. You're fighting basically this giant creature uh, who's like the size of a block of flats. And it, <laughs> it really feels like it's that big. It, it genuinely does because of VR. Right. So that's amazing. But um, the jump scares were always brilliant in Until Dawn. That was one of the best things they did in that game. You knew they were coming, mm-hmm. but they, they always got you. And they still manage to get you in this. Right. Um, and there's it's no really from fun. It. No, you can't hide from it. You know, you look behind you, you're still in the game. You look to the side, you you close your eyes and you can still hear it. So there's no escape, really. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. And the other thing I'll say is the shooting. I think when they tried to do rail shooters like Time Crisis and stuff on the PS3 with the move, it didn't feel quite right because you were aiming, you were basically aiming a pointer like a laser pen at your TV screen, more or less. Mm. But because you've got the depth of 3D, it, the aiming feels more natural, if that makes sense. It feels like, oh, I know that that's up in the top left corner and I'm going to point my gun in that direction and I'm going to hit it. And right. when you do hit it and you put, you pop someone's head off, a crazy clown or something, it's like, yes, got you. <laughs> How long does that game last, roughly? Uh, I think I completed it in about three hours. There's oh, seven or eight levels. It's quite long, and there's um, tons of extra difficulty settings and leaderboards and yeah, collectibles. So they've, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, so they've they've done a quite a lot to. Uh, like I would play it again, to be honest with you, um, if I had time, which I don't. But, but yeah. yeah, and the other game I can talk about, which I haven't done the review of yet, but it's coming, is Battle Zone. Um, mm. This has been my favourite game pre-release as many people that follow the site will know i get a little bit enthusiastic about battlezone (laughs) Mm -hmm. um this game is just cool man it's it's an arcade first person shooter you're in a tank Uh, it's kind of got a roguelike campaign to it Mm -hmm. so each time you start afresh um you're building up your tank and buying upgrades for your tank and you kind of start over each time but there are some persistent stuff going on as well um and it's fully playable in co-op um so i got to go to rebellion to try the co-op last week um and i played through practically the whole one of the whole campaigns and it's all procedurally generated so it's different every time i played through a campaign with another guy that worked there um and it's it's amazing having multiplayer or co-op in vr because i was looking for his tank all the time and like when i say looking i wasn't just panning my camera around i was looking with my head Mm -hmm. for his tank and that creates a weird kind of connection with the other player that you can't get on a standard 2d screen because it's like where are you where are you i'm I'm actually (laughs) looking for you where are you i need i need healing come come to me you know what i mean right right um so that that's really good. Um, the combat's really fun, um, and it feels like one of the meatier games. You what you were just alluding to earlier in the conversation about there not being any proper proper games. Mm-hmm. This feels like a proper game. Um, there are lots of different missions you can take on and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. Battlezone seems like one of the ones to get. I would say. Well, I mean, regardless of of the quality of these, I can just tell from your enthusiasm that it's immensely exciting. 
it is it, it's hard to go too overboard because you can see the obvious areas where they can improve it and they will improve it in years to come decades to come or whatever mm-hmm. but i think that this while i don't think while while games will always be played on a tv with a controller i think this is the start of something um and i don't think it's going away even if sony's not the one to take it further someone will because right. they've got something here um i don't know about you um some people will know that i am bored of standard games i'm quite quite tired of climbing towers and unlocking the map and mm-hmm. and all of that nonsense it's boring right um but vr is something brand new it's something exciting it takes you get i play games for, for escapism because i want to go places i haven't been before i want to meet people i've never met before and in vr it feels like the next step towards achieving true virtual escapism which is super super exciting mm-hmm. yeah so yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm happy with it i think i think they've got a challenge on their hands keeping the software lineup coming i think they've got a challenge on their hands in terms of get convincing people to keep it all set up and stuff like that because the reality is once you've played it for a few months you might be like i'm gonna pack it all away now there's no new games coming out so they have to keep hitting the notes and keep getting games out but they seem to be doing a good job already the launch lineup is way bigger than i would ever have anticipated right um just looking at our review planning document that we have at push square it's like ah there's loads <laughs> there's loads of stuff <laughs> so these reviews are staggered at the moment in terms of embargo so the ones we've discussed here are the ones that are available today yeah the reviews presumably yeah. now up on pushsquare.com yeah battle zone yeah you'll get until dawn tumble and um the other one we talked about playstation vr worlds today battle zone and batman are coming very soon and then next week we'll have rigs drive club vr headmaster um and tons more (laughs) there's a load there's actually loads of games excellent i tell you one game that i'm really looking forward to that, that i think is a launch game is 100 foot robot golf Yes, yes, it is a launch game. It's amazing. And that's the kind of game that I can get behind because it's clearly absurd, but you know exactly what you're getting. And I think think that game is going to really show the sense of scale that that VR can provide as well. Even with its wonky robots. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I can't undersell this idea of scale. Until you try it, you can't understand. But scale, 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 that's the word I always come to because everything looks massive <laughs> in, a, in just a way that you can't get on a TV. You just can't get it. Mm-hmm. Well, PlayStation VR, it's out on the 13th of October, so it's very close now. Make sure you check out pushsquare.com for all the reviews of the games leading up to the launch of the unit itself. Sammy, thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah, Thanks for having me. And now it's time for What Are We Playing? You may have noticed we've skipped Indie Bin this week, and that's not just in the interests of time, given that that thing you just listened to with your ear holes ran over a little bit. Tarrant, oh, why, why have we skipped Indie Bin? What, what happened? So, as you may know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I moved house Hooray. while starting university. Hooray. Um, and my PlayStation kind of died in the move. No. In- initially, I thought it was a hack incident where I was asked to change my password and I booted up my PS4 and there was a lot wrong and games were locked and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I called them up and they said, oh no, we sent that password request to everybody because of the two-step verification thing, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, right, so what's going on with my, with my stuff? And um, it basically boiled down to the hard drive corrupting during the move um so i've lost all of my saves and weirdly i lost all of my profiles that i had on the playstation except my main uk one so i had a japanese one and i had a us one and codes that i downloaded for example firewatch um, if i downloaded that from the us site um i no longer had access to it so it's actually locked right and I, i can't make the user again so I've actually lost the license to Firewatch. That is awful. Yeah. And, and you you texted me furiously. I rang you. I was so like, what, what's happened? happened? Oh, yeah. 
So initially, we we decided it was a hacking incident because, yeah. you, as you said, all your stuff was locked, and it said that your PS4 wasn't the primary PS4. Yes, and it had been deactivated recently, which is still inexplicable. Uh, we can't. Yeah. We can't work out what happened there. That doesn't make sense. But then we thought, oh, it's all right. Go to PlayStation Plus and download your saves from the cloud. Yeah, and for some reason, I'd, I'd had automatic uploads and stuff on for ages, and it just hadn't been uploading things. I mean, that's crazy. I should have checked. It's my own fault, but yeah. So I mean, I've I've managed to salvage Dark Souls, Fallout Four, and some of the other games, but Hyperlight Drifter, as I'm sure regular listeners will know, has been like one of my top games. Yeah, forty-eight hours worth of, of playtime, completely down the down the drain. It's been really disheartening. Um, but I'm going to take it as an opportunity to start fresh, play a few games that I haven't played for ages, and yeah, don't move your PlayStation around if you don't have to. And I remember that was one of my first questions when you said that. I said, could it have been damaged during the movie? I'm like, no, I had it I, carefully packaged separately, and I was carrying I it the whole way. I had it was it never left my person. It was bubble wrapped. It was super protected, and it still still died. That's crazy. I've put my PS4 in a in a backpack and carried it through the tube before. But you've got SSD. I do have SSD, you're right. And there's no moving parts, so the likelihood of a corruption is is neg- negligible. And that's what I was going to say, is if you can, buy SSD. Yeah, it's expensive, I- but it's worth it. After scares with my PS4 and my laptop, I now have SSDs in both, and it was expensive, yeah. but it's, it's future-proofing. It's, yeah, exactly, exactly. But... Because I have had no access to a PlayStation during the move, and then I've had this palaver with trying to solve that situation, there is no indie bin, unfortunately. Um, I hope you can all understand. Um, And feel for me. Yeah, feel for me when I'm starting Hyperlight again. Now, if you want to donate to the (laughs) Tarrant Appeal, we are asking for just £1 a month. That will allow Tarrant to buy tissues with which to cry himself to sleep. And I think that's a very reasonable request, don't you? Yeah, we'll leave the PayPal link in the uh, in the description of this podcast. Yeah, we are. Uh, we, we will do. Uh, CureTarrantTears.com is the website. If you want to go there and donate some money, we'd appreciate it. And uh, quite frankly, so would his pillow, because that's going to get very damp soon if we don't. If we don't get in those tissues. I mean, my tiny violin has really been blown off its feet recently. So it's so tiny, I can't even hear it. Yeah. Tiniest of violins. With that being said, I'm not going to talk about what I've played because it's not interesting at all. Oh. Let's <laughs> move on to audience questions. <laughs> question time. It's question time. We have two questions this week. Yeah, I kind of I, I forgot to ask you all, but thank you for the people that did step up to the plate and ask questions very quickly. Your heroes, your you heroes. Are. The first of the heroes is the McNoisy, who says after the bunker has released thoughts on FMV full motion video games. Her story is another example. Now the bracket things that you just read out, I had to add because he just said thoughts on full motion vi- like FMV. Oh, okay. So I had to quickly Google what the heck <laughs> FMV was. Well, the thing is, I found the bunker on the store a few weeks ago, and I thought it looked terrible. But, wow! <laughs> but terrible in the best possible way. Like it would be really funny to play it through. Eesh. And then the reviews came out, and it's actually really good. Yeah. So I am going to play it at some point. I genuinely am, and I'm going to live stream it as well. Okay. Because uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. I think they do have a place, but having not actually seen the game running properly yeah. and having not played it, I can't truly comment. But I know her story was something that that blew up a little a little while ago. They seem to whenever they do it well, they seem to blow up. But I mean, like I said, I had to Google it. I've I've never. I don't think I've ever played a full motion video game. So I think I should fix that. No, I can't say I have either, but it's it's basically a... Um, it usually plays out like a Telltale game, but actually filmed instead of generated in an engine. So is that more an interactive film rather than a video game? Well, again, I'm not entirely sure how the bunker works. Right. I'm not sure if there are any video, truly video gamey moments to it. 
or mechanics to it, but as far as I'm aware, it's it's basically making decisions and choosing where to go, that kind of stuff. So yeah. in that sense, you could there's it's really in a in a grey area because I'm sure there are quote unquote DVD games out there which are literally this. Like yeah. you know how you used to get the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire DVD that literally oh, just worked yeah. by sending you through different menus. That's yeah. that's kind of what this is, I suppose. But if it's packaged as a game and it's made with the DualShock in mind and it has trophies, then I'm happy to consider it a game. You know, Ooh, I'm not going to be snooty. Well, exactly. <laughs> if it has trophies, I'll I'll do anything. Uh, but I'm I'm not going to be snooty when it comes to handing out a title of what is a game and what isn't. Well, no, that's a whole different different discussion. Yeah. So I, I would say it's a game. No. So it's a game, and, I, and I'd I'd be welcome to more games like this because they not only a have the ability to be potentially unwittingly hilariously bad, which could make for great fun, but in the case of the bunker, it looks like they can actually genuinely be done quite well and be very good. Yeah. So I'm all about that. About that life. <laughs> yeah. What's the next question? Uh, this one's from Demaster, and he asks. What would be our dream game that we would make if we could? So imagine we have like all the tools at our disposal. What would be the dream game that we make? It's a really tough question. It is. It is. If I was thinking just stuff that I would like, if I was going to combine games? I mean, I've got something that I fall back to straight away all the time. And it's a really simple one. It's just a imagine Skyrim, but in the Transformers universe. Mm. like a big open world Transformers RPG maybe you can go from Cybertron to Earth quite easily maybe there's multiple planets or whatever almost like Destiny Transformers right see that sounds interesting apart from the fact that I just don't get Transformers at all Ah. so it doesn't doesn't do (laughs) anything for me very niche but yeah I mean well I wouldn't even say it's niche I think I'm just just a bit of an idiot that doesn't understand (laughs) Transformers is great Right. <laughs> not I'm not thrilled about PS Plus this month, Darren. I'm not gonna lie. I was. I nearly bought that game. Literally half an hour before the Push Square article about the PS Plus games went up, I'd nearly bought it. So <laughs> Well there you Trap go. avoided. I would either want that I'd want a sequel to Time Splitters in whatever yes. form that may take. Uh getting a little bit more specific, I would like Star Wars Battlefront three not this new nonsense that DICE has made that's a bit watered down and rubbish. I want a proper one that has full open warfare with yeah. uh, base capture, which is what made the first game, uh, for, oh, the second, first and second game so good. I want the space combat back in it. I want the ability to get into vehicles without having to get bloody tokens. Yeah. I want to be able to get into a plane on the battlefield and fly up into space and capture space stations, which is what they were doing with Battlefront 3 before it was canned. They That's, really fluffed it. They, yeah, I think they did. They needed to get a game out in time, and it was very flashy and very beautiful, and the sound design was perfect. And people did enjoy it at the time, but I don't imagine the community is, is that large anymore. I think most people mm. have, have called off it. Whereas, you know, on PS2, people were playing Battlefront 2 for years. They're still servers so active. Are they really? Yeah, people have made PC ones, I believe. Oh, wow. Well, in terms of my dream game, it would be a, a, a space RPG opera, kind of like Mass Effect, yeah. But combined with the the idea and principles that went into No Man's Sky, yeah. So a more structured universe that you can fly between at will, uh, collecting resources, doing missions, quests, that kind of stuff, with a proper engaging storyline and that kind of thing. Maybe have some multiplayer in there too, something like that. Basically. Eve Online, but, basically, yeah. I was thinking but without that. the sto- without the player-driven narrative, and with a more, f- you know, with a more given, written, okay. voice-acted narrative, uh, would be pretty cool. Fallout in space, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I'd like that. But there we go. Those are the questions we've got this week. We did get a couple of extra ones as well, and we will get to those next time. It's just we are running a little bit long today. That's what she said. Uh, t- did she? No. Okay, I didn't think so. Now, if you do have any questions for us, you can ask them in the Push Square forums. We are stickied right to the top of the online and communities section. So make sure you let us know in there. Whenever we post something, by the way, Tarrant, I don't know if you knew this, but on the front page of pushsquare.com, in the recently posted forums, whatever the hell that section is called, on the right-hand side (laughs) of the page, about halfway down, 
If anything pops up in there saying Push Square Podcast, something is happening. So go in there and have a look and talk to us. And help me out when I forget to ask. Well, I mean, how do they know a show is coming around? Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's your job. I know, I'm sorry. But there we go. Let's move on to the end of the show. So coming up on pushwear.com, obviously we mentioned all of the PSVR stuff is embargoed and that will be lifting throughout the week in the run-up to its October 13th release. So keep an eye on pushwear.com for all your PSVR reviews. Yep, a load of that stuff went up today. Yes. The embargo. And Mafia 3 obviously out at the end of the week as well. And as we said, a huge amount of PS4 games. Yes. So check back in the next couple of weeks. I had the chance to go to uh, Bethesda's offices in London to play Dishonored Dishonored Red 2. Nice. So my preview for that should be up by the time this is up as well. So you should all go and read that because it's quality hashtag content. Okay, got to get that content. Self-plug. Clicks, views. Hashtag content. <laughs> now, if you want all of this coming straight to your social media feeds, then follow us on Twitter at PushSquare or find us on Facebook.com forward slash PushSquare. And if you want to see rather than read because you're lazy like me, go to YouTube.com forward slash PushSquare. It's where you can find streams, vlogs, and other video form shenanigans. I know that uh, uh, Robert Ramsey and I did a Destiny, what is it called? Rise of Iron? Is that the one? Oh, cool. Is that latest one? We did a stream of that the other week. That's there, all cached and ready to go if you want to watch that. Nice. Uh, Alex Stinton is regularly doing streams. Sammy, like the madman he is, is doing all sorts of videos about VR at the moment. There's actually a review for the headset. Uh, I think he's got various opinion pieces about the games as well going up. But make sure you go to pushware.com to see that stuff as well. Or read it, I should say. He's a busy man. He is. He really is. So what about us? You can find the Push Square podcast on SoundCloud. Did I say that right that time? Yeah, you did. I think yes, you did, but you, you still paused and that kind of ruined it. Yeah, but I had to check. I was, I was kind of replaying it in my head. I mean, it's not hard. Oh, I'm finding it really hard. Uh, Stitcher. That, that is what she said. Oh, you, that was so much better than mine as well. I know it was. Anyway, Stitcher and iTunes. Now, on iTunes, if you could leave us a five-star review, that would be great. We literally feed off the ego points. Yeah, need those um, ego points, get them in. And I, I, I mean, I've been feeling really hungry for ego points. You guys aren't going to iTunes and five-starring us, so... We need more of those ego points. We need your help. Get those ego points coming. And obviously you can donate to my cause as well for my tissue fund. Yes, which feed kind of sound, tissues. That also sounds like a euphemism, so maybe no, we should not. change my catchphrase. No, but, yeah. Feed Tarrant tissues. Oh, God. He'll secrete all over them. Right. It'll secrete fluid on the tissue. Stop. There we go. That's Stop. fine. Make sure you keep it locked to pushsquare.com, the best PlayStation site on the internet. And if anyone tells you otherwise, you can punch them in the face. That's, That's the rule. rule. Taren, thank you so much for playing radio with me today. Ah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thanks for listening, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Push Square Podcast. For the latest PlayStation news, reviews, and features, visit www.pushsquare.com. Push Square.